Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this SDKFZ-10 Zugkraftwagen 1T DMAG D7. It's a half-track. This is a 72nd scale kit from Special Armor, and this is the first Special Armor kit that I've built, so I had no real idea what to expect of it. I liked the picture on the box though, specifically the camo pattern, and for Impulse buying Herbert, that was enough. I thought I took a picture of the back of the box, but it seems I mustn't have. I'm sure there was something there, but I've since thrown the box out, so maybe it's not that important. Fortunately, we can have a look at what's in the box. I didn't throw that away. There are two sprues in this tan-coloured plastic. There's quite a few wheels here. There are tracks on this sprue too. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these are better than rubber band tracks. I have, at this point of course, already built the kit, so I'm pretty confident in saying that. Most of the parts on these sprues are quite nice and neat. There are mould lines, and while they're not terrible at all, I have seen better mould lines. Which is to say smaller, less intrusive mould lines. Still, cleanup won't take too much time. The detail is pretty decent, but as always, I'm not an expert on this kind of vehicle, or any vehicle. So for all I know, there could be some parts that are guilty of the horrendous crime of being a couple of scale millimetres out of place. But it looks fine to me, and it looks like what it's meant to be. There are some small fiddly bits here and there, but nothing that's going to make my head explode. There was a third grey sprue included, with a new set of drive sprockets and tracks. I don't know that they're more accurate than the ones the kit already had. The drive sprockets were a little bit less neatly moulded though and we'll see that shortly. These are the decals we get. They are mostly license plates, but there is a couple of hull markings and some gauges for the dashboard as well. Having never built a special hobby kit before, I've never used their decals, so I don't know what they're like, but they look okay. And here's the instruction booklet. I did appreciate that this was actually a booklet, and not a big fold-out sheet. I just find a booklet much nicer to use. On the first page you can see in the sprue diagrams that some things have been crossed out. It looks like we're going to have a few jerry cans for the bits box. The instruction diagrams are, for the most part, pretty clear and easy to understand. There's red arrows showing where pretty much everything goes. I did have a little bit of confusion with a couple of parts, but that could be more of a me problem than a real problem with the instructions. There's a couple of basic painting and marking guides, which are pretty simple, but they could be helpful as a starting point. And at the end, there's some advertisement for other stuff you can get from Special Hobby, and Special Armor, and Special Navy. I wonder if there's a Special Air Force too. Anyway, let's glue some bits of plastic together. First, those drive sprockets. Side by side you can see they are quite similar. The grey one seems to have slightly smaller teethy bits. The problem with it is the little recess and the pin that goes into it are both poorly moulded, but on the tan coloured part it's nice and crisp. The grey parts do seem to be a bit thinner and slightly better looking on the outside, and I would assume they're included because they're meant to be better quality. Unsurprisingly, they didn't go together very well, and I guess the keying in the middle could be cut and kajiggered so that it would go together, but the tan coloured parts did go together straight away with no issue, so I simply used those instead. They roll along the grey track links with no problem, so I figured why not. I glue the sprockets onto the wheelie holy hull side bit, which is simple enough. Then road wheels. These are of course the interleaved kind the Germans were so fond of, Pay attention to the instructions, they'll show you where the various wheels go. Some of the wheels are combined into sets of three, which is quite helpful. There are obviously axles for the wheels to mount onto, but there is a little bit of play to the single wheels, so you might need to do some nudging and eyeballing to get them as straight as you can. Once you've got both sets of wheels together, it's time for tracks, and I would certainly recommend letting your wheels bond solidly in place before doing this. It's not too difficult, and the plastic tracks can bend pretty easily. I'm sure if you bent them too much they would break, but they should stay together when you bend them around the sprockets and wheels and such. You do have to cut off a couple of links to get them to the right length, that wasn't a surprise, the instructions do tell us that, so it's not a problem. I'm pretty sure I've got my tracks on backwards, so undoubtedly the historically accurate track orientation police are coming. 
These tracks are a little bit fiddly to get together, but not too bad. And I would prefer this to rubber band tracks any day. I set those aside to bond, and then add this internal detailing bit to the hull. It pretty much drops right into place. I follow that with the cab front part, I guess you might call it, and this did need a bit of pressure to get it all the way into place, but nothing too challenging. I would suggest not pressing down on the windshield, and it's probably obvious why. Why not glue the track sets onto the sides of the hull? There's no keying for this, but the parts are shaped such that it's fairly obvious where they should go. They can be slid back and forth, but I figured as far forward as possible was the right idea. Next, I add the little boxes that go in behind the front mudguards, and these pretty much drop right into place. The left one did need a bit more kajiggering than the other, but nothing too outrageous. Then, why not hide the fact that there's no engine by adding the outer parts that hide it, like the radiator, and the bonnet, or if you're an American, a hood, or Haube if you're German. Is that correct German? I did use Google Translate. They wouldn't lead me astray, would they? Anyway, this goes into place pretty easily. I will say though that the top part doesn't quite seem to fit perfectly, and it's a bit gappy on the right hand side. Though that should have a little bit of a gap there because it opens, so maybe it's not so bad. Next, I assemble some front wheels. These are keyed, so it's really easy to get this right. Correctly assembled wheels are all well and good, but we're going to need something to hold them on the hull. Onto this leaf spring, I glue this axle part. It is a little bit fiddly, but there are some tiny bits of keying, so it's not too difficult. Then this doodad, which I assume has a special name that I'm unaware of. It was a bit fiddly to get this into place, but not quite as bad as this steering bar. Whatever its name is, it was kind of annoying to get into place. I got there in the end though. Why not attach that assembly to the hull now? There are slots to help you with positioning, so it's pretty simple. Just make sure that it's nice and level. And when that's in place, I attach the wheels, which is about as easy as you can imagine. Though there is a fair bit of play here, so you might need to do a bit of nudging to avoid having wonky wheels. Next, I add these fiddly little whatever they are's. There is a hole on the underside of the hole they should go into, so there is something to guide them, but it was a bit tricky to get them in there. I wonder if it might be a bit easier to install these before the front axle thing, but obviously we can't go back in time and test that out. I did get them in place though, so I guess that's what matters. There's a couple of small hooks that go on either side of the engine compartment, and I think I got these in the correct position. Just below the radiator, I add a license plate. Can't leave that off now, you might get in trouble with the law. Headlamps are a good idea. These are small parts, so you probably won't be surprised to learn that they're kind of fiddly. And while I'm talking about lamps, it's probably worth noting that there should be a lamp on the right side of the windshield. But either I lost that part, or determined it was a bit too fiddly. I forget which. Confessing to your crimes, eh? Yes? A light I did not omit is the Notec light, which goes on the front left mudguard like so. A lot of German vehicles have the ball on stick vehicle with indication devices, and this one is no exception. They'll need a bit of nudging so they look like they line up with each other, but they're simple enough to place. Now it's tool time. There's not really anything to guide these tools, so if you wanted, it probably wouldn't really hurt anything to omit some of them. I think they add something to the model though, mostly tool-ishness, yeah. So I put them all on roughly where it looks like the instructions want them. Obviously tweezers are helpful, and a good bit of nudging was needed. Most of the jerry cans in this kit are not used, but we do need two of them. They're made up of two parts each, and they go together easily enough. And if you were a perfectionist, you might do a bit of putty work on them. Not me though. Seats are an important part of the interior of this half track, so let's add those now. I can't quite remember if this left seat had keying, I did build this a while ago, but it's pretty easy to get into place. The other seat did take a little bit more kajiggering, and there is less to hold it in place, but it's not too difficult either. Why not then add the controls, like the this thing? Maybe this next thing is the gear shifter, or it might be a handbrake. Using tweezers makes these things a good deal less difficult to get into place. 
I follow those with the steering wheel, which goes into place fairly easily here on the left. Why not glue the rear plate on next? It more or less drops right into place, I guess unless you've put the track sets on wrong or something like that. Speaking of doing something wrong, here I'm installing these seat box things wrong. I was a little bit confused by the instructions at the time, I might have been tired or just excessively stupid, but looking back at them to edit this video, it wouldn't have taken too much thought to look at the other diagrams to see where these go. So the parts don't go up here on the sides, they go down lower inside the hull. Hopefully my stupidity can help others. I didn't realise I'd made an error and moved on, attaching the doors. It took a fair bit of fiddling and trimming to get them to fit nicely, which was admittedly a little bit annoying, but definitely not the worst thing in the world, and it is a good example of why you should test fit. In the end I got both doors on reasonably neatly, and then I installed a towing hook, just in case we need to tow a sauerkraut trailer. At this point I realised my mistake with the inner CT things and removed them. Then I glue the sides of the rear compartment together. This is a bit fiddly, and there isn't any particularly strong keying for it, but if you can get the parts together around the right way, at close to 90 degree angles to form a rectangular shape, it's not too hard. It's definitely easier than trying to glue the parts onto the hull one at a time. While I did this, I repositioned the seat things. It's almost as though I did it right the first time, but I didn't. Gluing the rear compartment on isn't too hard, but because there's no keying for it, you'll have to do a bit of eyeballing and nudging, but at this point in the build you should be used to that kind of thing. I would say the best way to glue this is to start along one edge first, and once you've got that lined up, it's pretty simple to add glue and position the other two edges. We can then add this little, I don't know, compartment? Sauerkraut trough? Yeah, that's what it is, it's a sauerkraut trough. Now for some more little detail-y things, like this combination license plate and rear convoy light. Glue it together to form a 90 degree angle and it should be fine. Then I glue a couple of boxes on. The smaller one goes on the hull's left, and the larger one on the right. I don't know how strict this positioning is, but I've chosen not to raise the ire of the instruction police. Not at this moment anyway. Then jerry cans. As the instructions instruct, I put one on either side of the sauerkraut trough. At the rear, I add the mud guards. These aren't too fiddly, but the tweezers did help quite a bit. Once those are in place, I add this thing, which I believe to be some kind of light, on the right hand side. I recall the instructions suggesting that if you wanted, you could add a license plate to this part, and all of the painting examples in the instructions show this with two license plates but because you would have to scratch build the license plate and I didn't really care, I've not done that. One is enough for me, and that one license plate is on this part that we put together earlier. Both of these parts are easy enough to put on, though you might have to give them a bit of an extra nudge to make sure they're not hanging downwards too much. Below the towing hitch, I add this little nubbin. I know we usually banish nubbins to the black hole, but this is a good nubbin. It will help hold the large roll of wire that'll go here in a moment. Before that though, I put together the canvas cover, which only comes in folded down mode. It would be nice if you could model it up, but you can't always get what you want. This is pretty simple though, you just glue the side parts on. And there's no keying here either, but it's pretty easy to see when everything's lined up properly. It can then be glued into place at the rear of the half track, like so. You might have to nudge the nubbins on the end of the folded support bits into their hole, but I wouldn't say that's much of a challenge. The final detail is the big roll of wire that I mentioned before. It goes on the rear here. I don't know if this is meant to be barbed wire, it's pretty smooth, but whatever it is it's not too difficult to place. You just have to make sure it's around the right way, and then line up the little hooks moulded into the roll with the nubbins on the back of the hull. Simple. I think that's quite an interesting looking detail. Anyway, the SDKFZ-10 Zugkraftwagen in 70 second scale from Special Armor is now completed, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's not too bad at all. I wouldn't say that it's the best possible model of one of these half-tracks, but it was quite cheap, and while I didn't quite know what to expect because it was my first Special Armor or hobby or special anything kit, I didn't really have high expectations because of that low cost. 
it's a lot better than I was expecting, is what I'm getting at. It did, in places, require more cleanup than some more expensive or more recent kits might require, but nothing I would consider especially bad. For the most part, it didn't take too much work to get all of the parts to go together. The main issues I had were with the doors and the grey drive sprocket, and all the doors needed was a bit of extra cleanup, and the sprockets I just used the tan ones. Not really bad issues if you ask me. It's not a bad little model, and it might be quite useful if you play war games in 70 second scale. I feel like it's probably sturdy enough for that sort of thing. I will almost certainly buy another special armour kit, if I see one that I like the look of. I actually quite liked the camo pattern shown on the front of the box for this kit, and I'm kind of inspired to try it out. Maybe not on this particular kit, but on something similar. As always with painting though, I wouldn't hold your breath. At this moment in time, it's just a thought. Anyway, I might be waffling now. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section below. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you want to share, why not drop by our friendly Discord community and show us some pictures. We would love to see what you've done. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live, check out my Twitch channel, which is where I livestream pretty much all of the builds you see on this channel. There's a link in the description. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon here on YouTube to see when new videos are out. And if you'd like to see those videos a bit early before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. That would be very poggers of you, as the youth say. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.